Wow, a lot happened in this show. Oh, hello, folks. For I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. Again, it's another week of wrestling. Um, let's see here. I'll talk about the week, what's going to happen first. Yeah, and this video will probably be up Tuesday morning. Probably making it a little bit too late, but that's okay. And typical Monday Night Raw um, tomorrow or later today, depending when you're watching this. It's going to be my live stream of Impact Wrestling, another Who Done It. So we'll see about that. Wednesday's AEW review, and wow, Thursday. This is a whole week of wrestling. Wow. Thursday is going to be a prediction show. I might have to have Iho Del Hobo El Vagabundo Dos in because he's better at predictions than Doctor Tom was. Uh, Friday's going to be SmackDown. Wow, that's right. This is a full full week. And Saturday, it's going to be Full Metal Gear Solid World of Modern Star Warfare, or whatever it is, whatever I feel to name it. I'm going to take the video in the tales. Well, that's a little bit of the preview of the week. Let's cut right to the chase, folks. I'd like to get this done hopefully soon. Let's talk about some Monday Night Raw, and wow, there's a lot of notes. A lot, a lot happened on this show, which is weird. Uh, starts off, Randy Orton cuts a promo. Alexa Bliss shows up, and she has the, the play in pain gloves. I don't know if Vince is an evil, vindictive man, and he knows how to tweak people. Paige, I know, has tattoos along like the side of her hand. Alexa Bliss had gloves that said play. Or pain. Indeed. A little poke there a little bit. He poked Paige. Because Paige said she's not going to give up her Twitter. She would rather quit WWE than give up Twitter. I don't know. It all depends on how much she makes of Twitter. Versus the rigor morale of wrestling. So who knows. That was just funny. A little. little <laughs> to Paige. Um, so again Orton. His promo, Alexa Bliss shows up because again we all know what happened to the house that Sister Abigail was buried underneath with a shock. Yeah. Uh, then Drew just comes out of nowhere with a Claymore. Claymore from nowhere. Uh, Miz tries to cash in. Drew's having none of this nonsense. He threw he threw him out. Toss Mundo. Haunts Miz on the outside. No, no, no. It's not happening here. And we start with our first match. And wow, this is a weird start. Starts off with, Oh, walk with Elias. <sighs> oh, no. I think that was some of that popcorn I had today. Oh, I was watching pro wrestling. Popcorn and pro wrestling actually goes together. Yeah, it was Elias. He's there, he's, they're going to have a guitar and a pole match. I wonder from whom they got that idea. Indeed. It's going to be him versus Jeff Hardy. And for some reason, this is a blow-off match. They could have, even though it's a terrible idea, they could have done this and pushed it out to Survivor Series. This could have been like the pre-show match for Survivor Series versus us having it on Monday Night Raw. I understand why it's not a main event show. This just feels like like a raw like a pay-per-view pre-show match. It might just be me though. Who knows? And eventually I'm getting a new microphone too. So eventually it's, it's gonna be a pre setup or that's why I put on my Christmas list. Christmas list. It's almost Christmas time too. Again, I don't think you're gonna see any of the Christmas stuff. I don't know, maybe I'll put a stocking over there or something. So I have the three. Uh, we'll, I'll figure out something. Then I have all the Christmas decor to get out. And I have to, oh, I have to move stuff around too. Wow. I didn't realize how much I have to do for Christmas. I have to cook. Make the feast. But that's, I digress. We have uh, Jeff Hardy coming out. So it's going to be Jeff Hardy versus Elias and a guitar and a pole match. He actually puts a really nice guitar up there. He knows a nice guitar because, well, We'll find out. 
But uh, for the most part, it's very quick. Jeff kind of jumps Elias a little bit to go to the outside. He hits a flying leg lariat onto Elias um, back in the ring. I mean, this was a quick match, though, too. It was weird. It, it didn't. It really didn't feel like a block match. It felt way too quick for that. Um, Hardy gets the early advantage. Elias gets a little few shots in, but not that much. Hardy goes to the top, and then off the top rope with the guitar smash coming down the back of Elias. The, gu the guitar didn't shatter. I'll give Jeff Jarrett this. Um, not one of my favorite wrestlers, but at least when he had a guitar, like that guitar disintegrated and went poof into this like pile of dust. I know they loaded it with like baby powder or some or some poofy dry mix, but man, that looked good. This guitar no sold the guitar shot. This this guitar no sold the guitar shot. Um, Elias just goes down. Jeff Hardy gets the cover. One, two, three. Jeff Hardy wants to finish off the guitar. It really took a steel ring post to break a guitar. That's why I think it's one of the, like, actually one of the better guitars. None of the prop guitars are the really cheap ones. Like, they almost seem to, like, hand make. Uh, just as a prop, put some baby powder in there. But, no, this was a sol this was a solid guitar. This match was way too short, though. It just didn't feel like a bluff match. I, I don't know. I'm going to downgrade it. This, this was a can of soup match. It was way too quick. It just was like, okay, let's do this and get this over with. Which is never a good way to go. Then we have Amanda Rose and Dana, and Dana Brooke in the next match. They're going to take on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, Nia... Starts off with Dana Brooke. Nia just shoves Dana around. Uh, Dana eventually jumps on the back of Nia Jax. Again, very typical what you do to the bigger person. Puts Tries to put her in the, in the old sleeper hold. But no, um, Dana gets ran into the corner back first. Another classic way to get out of the sleeper hold. Um, uh, Mandy Rose tags in. But Mandy Rose tries to do the Irish rip. Then Nia Jax is having absolutely none of that. Um, she can't budge Dax. Uh, Nia Jax hits a couple moves on poor Mandy. And I'll tell you what the, the video they did for this was like the like the lead up to this was kind of amazing because you just see Dana Brooke looking pretty and smiling, and and then Mandy's like flexing with like uh, elastic bands and stuff. Impressive. Again. Vince likes those blonde-haired women. Not my favorite, but hey, whatever floats his boat. Uh, let's see. So where was I? So uh, Dana made the save because she had the chop block to the knee of Nia Jax. Then Dana hits a string of string of clotheslines. Does her little flippy thing, flippy corner elbow thing that she does. Then Shayna gets in, and then Lana shows up. Lana, stay away. You know what's going to happen to you, Lana. Just say, I've had enough. But, again, we'll get to this again. And Lana sh shows up. Shayna's kind of distracted by Lana. Dana tried to do that flippy elbow onto Shayna Baszler, but now she winds up in the clutch. Lana, again, it's just, it's just a total distraction. Mandy Rose is on the outside. Mandy Rose has a good-looking knee, by the way. Because she did nail Nia Jax with that. Nia Jax sold that really good, too. However, Dana Brooke's stuck in the ring, even though Shayna Baszler gets distracted. Dana Brooke still gets stuck in the clutch. Carafuna Clash is the rear naked choke. And yeah, as expected, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler won. And everyone's like, run, Lana, run! Because you know it's going to happen. It's like, oh, Lana, you never learn. This match was okay. Um, this is a ham sandwich of a match. Then there's more Randy Orton backstage. Um, then we cut to the ring. Our truth. Our truth is confused. Bobby Boucher was in Louisiana. 
you're in Orlando, Florida, our truth you're not going to see Bobby Boucher in Orlando, Florida. You might get Bobby Lashley, though, and Bobby Lashley is not going to sign your water bottle. But yeah, our truth thinks Bobby Boucher is going to show up from the water boy. No, it's Bobby Lashley. Um, it's a champion for champion match. This is just a pure nutter squash the way it should be. Um, R Truth first starts out saying, no, 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 we don't have to do this. No belts on the line. He just lays down and says, pin me. Bobby Lashley has none of it. He's part of the hurt business. He wants to damage someone. So Bobby Lashley literally picks R Truth up off the ground. Uh, R Truth tries some offense, a couple of kicks going off the ropes. <laughs> Nothing really major. Just kind of annoys Bobby Lashley. Uh, Hits the big spear, then the hurt lock. R-Truth passes out. Match over. That in, of, that in and of itself is a ham sandwich. Now what happened next was kind of funny. Drew Gulak runs in the ring. He tries to pin R-Truth. Bobby Lashley's like, that's not happening, boy. Uh, he picks up Drew Gulak, do, uh, hits the Dominator on Drew Gulak. Gulak's like absolutely terrified at this point. Puts him in the Hurt Lock. And then <laughs> Bobby Lashley just throws a unconscious Drew Gulak onto another unconscious R-Truth. Drew Gulak picks up the one, two, three... And what I like in the fact that it's a non-roll-up win for the 24-7 belt, that was actually pretty good. It's a little bit different. That's a ham sandwich. Mainly because Drew Gulak didn't do anything but get beat up. And backstage, we see Grand Metal League and Lindsay Dorado talking about the 24-7 belt. They run, run to that big guy, AJ's bodyguard. Like, no, we'll just go another way. Uh, Nia Jax cuts a promo then, saying, yeah, Lana's going through a table. You know it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen until Miro's no longer wrestling on AEW. Or Lana just decides, I've had enough, and, and, she, and she quits. But, yeah, so we'll see what happens with that. Uh, back in the ring, AJ Styles, Keith Lee, and Sheamus. They all get together. AJ wants to fist bump. Says, yeah, we're on the same team, Slim. Yeah, I'm down for this. Like, no one wants to fist bump me. Because, um, again, they have the three members. Braun Strowman comes out. I want to be a member, too. No one wants to fight me for it. So Adam Pierce comes out. Adam Pierce now has all the authority, I think. Maybe Adam Pierce will be in charge instead of Triple H one day. Or are they grooming Adam Pierce for Kevin Dunn's job? Indeed. I know, so the only way Braun Strowman gets to be on Team Raw for a Survivor Series after Braun lists all his accolades for Survivor. I don't think he's, he, has he really been part of 12 Survivor Series? That seems like a lot for some reason. He has the most eliminations, but that's not that hard though. Because you can get rid of five people easily. And even if you're at two of them, that's ten people in total. So that's not... But I don't think he's been around for 12. Only because I still remember the original Survivor Series. When they had the gobbledygooker. I mean, it was Team Demolition. Versus, like, the Million Dollar Team. And this is taxing my memory now. Way better. It was like the Hulkamaniacs. Versus the Heenan family. This is going back there in time. So I'm sure my memory is a little fuzzy about that stuff. But yeah. Um, so they're going to have a match. Braun Strowman takes on Keith Lee and, she and Sheamus in a triple threat match. Very simply, Braun Strowman loses. No matter how, he's out of here. Uh, starts off. They kind of brawl a little bit. They uh, both... Braun Strowman and Sheamus went up on the outside. Keith Lee does a splash to the outside onto everyone. That was kind of amazing. That was a shocker. Uh, Sheamus then starts to just rake the face, the nose, 
eyes, I don't know, cheeks somehow of Keith Lee. Again, he's using those dirty techniques. I like that. We'll get more into Seamus and, and how I like the evolution of Seamus in a little bit as well. And Braun does can they get thrown on the outside. Braun whoa, whoa. does the steamroller express on everyone pounces Keith Lee. Keith Lee like flies backwards. That was hilarious. Braun then eats the steps. There are more brawling on the outside. Seamus posts Keith Lee. And then Braun as Keith Lee and Seamus wind up along the barricade. Braun does a splash onto them, like, through the barricade. Doesn't take out the one section. No, normally it's that one corner section that always gets destroyed. This took out, like, a good one-third of the whole side. That you don't see very often. So, again, that's good to see that they're, they're doing the same tropes a little bit differently, though. That's good. Seamus, again, he goes back after the raking the face and the nose. Uh, by a washing oil of, of Keith Lee. Then, oh my god. They did a Tower of Doom spot, which I didn't realize he could do. And they were priced. Keith Lee is, say, 300 plus. Bronze, 300 plus. It's 600. Toss in Seamus, 200 plus. Carry thing, carry everything over. This might not be a thousand pounds of humanity, but I want to say it's definitely up there in the nine in the nine hundred pound mark. And I was honestly shocked that the whole ring stood up because we've seen much less. Like two men again, Braun Strowman, and the Big Show like, did that spot. They like broke the whole ring uh, when Big Show was the giant. He actually tore the ring posts off and everything collapsed. So I'm I'm surprised they didn't do that spot. But again, it's good for them because they're keeping things original. So that when it happens again, like there's so there's so much time between. You're like, whoa, I haven't seen that in like forever. That's good to see. You don't want to see the same thing over and over again. You're like, oh, let us go and do this again. Take it out. But no, when they don't do it that frequently, that's really good to see. And there was a running power slam onto Sheamus because Sheamus broke kicked Keith Lee. That put Keith Lee out of the picture. Sheamus ate the running power slam. Braun is on the team now. And AJ comes comes back out. This was a fun match. This was a good cheeseburger match. Then let's see here. Then we had AJ Styles comes in the ring. They're like, hey, shake hands. So they shake hands. So Keith Lee and Braun Strowman shake hands. So they're like, okay, we'll fight later. We're on the same team now. Um, Sheamus then says, I, you stole the match from me. And they hug it out. It's always good to see. And then, <laughs> then they just turn on each other. Um, Braun Strowman ate a bro kick. Keith Lee pounced out of the ring Seamus Keithy went over to gloat and then <laughs> Keithy just got shoved out by AJ Styles AJ Styles was there so no one wanted a fist bump AJ Styles and he should be the captain AJ Styles is so great <sighs> again AJ, everything's good about AJ Styles his music is great his presentation is great his in-ring in work is great he might he might he's definitely up there at present day Jeez, he has to be one of the at least top 25 wrestlers throughout the world. He has to be up there. And that's including New Japan. Noah's okay. They really only have Pac and Sima. Um, New Japan, they're always going to have Suzuki and Okada. Okada's always going to be up there. Impact, yeah. Not so much. They do have Moose and EC3, though. But yeah, he, AJ Styles definitely has to be up in the top 25. I'm pretty sure, depending who you ask, it's, it has to be somewhere in there. And I want to hear from you, my YouTube audience. Where would you put 
AJ Styles. Rank him. Today's today's top wrestlers. Because, jeez. It's so hard to rank who is the best wrestler ever. Because there's so many weird things. But AJ Styles, modern day wrestling, um, 2020, has to be up there. Then we have Angel Garza saying he's going to give someone a rose. I don't know. You better not give me a rose. No, thanks. Then we have Drew McIntyre says, you know what? Everyone enjoys to see the Miz get beat up. We know it's going to happen later. Then the Firefly Funhouse. This is the best one. Yeah. You had the swear jar come out. And you knew, you're like, why is the rambling rabbit putting money in the swear jar? The swear jar is looking pretty full. First of all, Alexa Bliss tickles the belly of Huskus the pig. I, I wouldn't mind that either. That would be impressive. I'd, I'd like that. I'd pay for that almost. Well, you pay for another week means too. And then uh, Sister Abigail <laughs> says, Randy Orton can off. <laughs> and gets beeped out. <laughs> <laughs> because of what he did, how he burned down the house. Alexa Bliss said, oh, that's not nice language. <laughs> so then Sister Abigail says, you can F off too, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa Bliss looked absolutely shocked. And then she said, I'm going to do it. And then those, um, again, Bray Wyatt had a flashback of what happened to the the shack that sister get that was built over sister abigail's remains and again oh, the flames and the pose yes um the eyes of randy orton and, and then alexa bliss learned a new trick i don't know what kind of laffy taffy she was chewing on but wow she got free k and there was so much cursing going on in the Firefly Funhouse. Bravo. I like, I so, I'm so tickled by the fact that Sister Abigail told Alexa Bliss to fuck off. That was amazing. Um, then there's a little promo about Pate with Peyton and Lacey Evans saying Lana's going to get destroyed. Again, Vince just has it in for Lana. Mainly since Ruth has said, screw this place. But yeah, our uh, next match was Nia Jax versus Lana. First thing you wanted to say, run, Lana, run. Um, Nia, the, con the cursing continued, not at New Japan levels. But I'll tell you what, after what Sister Abigail said, it might get up there. Uh, Nia Jax called Lana a piece of crap. Whoa, that's pretty strong words. Um... Shannon Baszler, the first thing she does, she gets the table ready. You know who's going to go through that table. It's just a matter of time. Uh, Lena, uh, Lana, who, by the way, lost her Russian accent. So she's no longer the ravishing Russian. Uh, kind of killed because I remember her as a ravishing Russian. She was pretty good then. But now that she lost the Russian accent, meh. Um, so they were getting the table ready. Lana just gets driven into the corner. Uh, Nia Jax toys with Lana. Eventually just hits a Simone drop on her. And then we all know what happens. Nia Jax and Jane Baser, they're victorious. They're going to go out. Poor Lana's there. Left, left in, in a hurt pile mess. Clutching her own elbows as she lays prone in the fetal position. Nia Jax is like, no, it, it, it's time for this. <laughs> you can almost hear, Devon, go get the tables. So, Devon, get the tables. And then Lana went through a table. But honestly, that match in itself, meh. It, it, it got that cheap pop. It was that cheap chuckle. It was a ham sandwich of a match. When the Hurt Business come out in the MVP lounge, new, the New Day show up. They started cutting a promo. Um, yeah, how, how they've held more, how Kofi Kingston's held, held more belts than they have in total. I don't know. Bobby Lashley, he was IC champion, US champion. 
I want to say at one time, he was also back in the day. And even Xavier Woods made fun of this. When um, he was the WWE champion, that's when Xavier Woods was like in seventh grade. Back in the day. You don't want to age people like that. That's pretty bad. So this leads to our next match, the Hurt Business taking on the New Day. The Hurt Business, we have Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin. MVP goes to the commentary booth. Xavier Woods starts off strong. I don't know. Maybe Vince th thought what happened to Paige and making fun of Paige with Alexis Gloves kind of got Xavier Woods out of the woods for now. But yeah, uh, Xavier Woods starts with a satellite. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, like a satellite head scissors. Then goes to the stalling one arm suplex, which looks great. Uh, the New Day's double teams, so crisp. Uh, the kicks, the tandem kicks. Going off the ropes, more kicks. It's good stuff. Uh, Kofi Kingston, monkey flipped. Oh, I'm Shelton. When Shelton gets in after Cedric tags out, I guess the better of Kofi sends him hard into the corner. That was a hard Irish whip. Uh, Kofi Kingston does the monkey flip. But Cedric Alexander gets back in. Uh, let's see here. Xavier. Oh, oh yeah, it took uh, Cedric off his feet by a basement drop kick, and then started to work over Shelton a little bit, but Shelton's too strong, too tough for him. It's because he ate the knee from Shelton Benjamin. Again, Shelton Benjamin learned a lot about delivering knees probably over in New Japan. <laughs> then I just realized they fixed the barricade from like a couple of matches ago. Because then, of course, you have the barricade spot, but no one goes through the barricade. They just get sent against the barricade. Uh, Kofi gets the hot tag. He starts starts beating up everyone. The boom drop to the flying heads, flying Herakurana, which is always amazing to see because I have no idea how they do that without breaking their own neck. Xavier gets the blind tag and some tornado DDT. However... Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander, they both they kind of work in tandem. Shel uh, Cedric Alexander first hits the Neuralizer. Shelton Benjamin then hits Paydirt. The Hurt Business wins. After Survivor Series, this is going to be an interesting feud. Once they get rid of Retribution, because heaven knows they're awful, this will be pretty good. This will be something good for both the New Day and the Hurt Business. So, yeah, this was actually, I'll tell you what, uh, it got a little botchy at the end, a little bit sloppy. They, they kind of, they just seemed to kind of wear each other out. Overall, though, it was a solid cheeseburger match. And Nikki Cross was trying to talk, talk to Alexa. Alexa Bliss left her contacts in. Her eyes are all, like, fun housey. <sighs> poor Nikki Cross. Poor, poor Nikki Cross. Uh, but I know you're not like this. You're my best friend. You're my best mate. We're a mate still, right? You got me a coffee cup once. A cup of coffee is good. I need more coffee. Yeah. So that happened. Then we had a really quick match. It was Ricochet because I looked at the clock. I'm like, huh? It was like, I think 10.35 when this match started. It was over like. Like 10 It's Ricochet versus Tucker Knight. Tucker Knight has a little bit different entrance. He comes out of his pant and his pants. And while he shows up, uh, Ricochet again he eats multiple uh, belly to bellies from Tucker. However, Tucker eats a recoil and literally that was the match. Um I'll tell you what, they're they're really treating Ricochet and, and Tucker like like garbage. Well Tucker I can under I can see because he turned on Otis. So he has to eventually face Otis one day. And then they'll become back to friends. So it's a, it's a very classic time-honored tag team tradition. Uh, Ricochet's just, just Ricochet. They just had to say, well, well, we'll just have you win anyway to, so that you can get beat up by Retribution because Retribution showed up. The match itself, meh. It was a can of soup match.
Retribution shows up then. Um, Tucker Knight gets beat up. Ricochet gets beat up. Yeah. Um, Retribution is I'm done with. Uh, Sheamus and Drew are in the back. They talk. Irish connection. But Drew's Scottish, though. But Sheamus is Irish. I don't think those two countries like each other that much. That's okay. Drew's talking about, yep, it's time to have fun by beating up the Miz. So our next match was the Miz. Um, oh, and Sheamus tried to recruit him to Team Raw. Makes sense, though. He's kind of said he's in his own feud with Randy Orton, so who knows what will happen. We have the Miz and Morrison taking on Drew McIntyre in a handicap match. Uh, Morrison is in the ring. The Miz starts off. Drew beats the Miz up. Then he pulls Morrison in the hard way. Miz, again, because he's actually still the legal man, chop blocks Drew McIntyre. Smart wrestling by Miz. Uh, Miz and Morrison then double team Drew. It makes sense. If you're going to have a two on one advantage, you might as well use it. Uh, Drew then takes out both to go to the outside. And he hits, he does the reverse Alabama slam on Morrison, but drops him on top of Miz. I'll tell you what, that double chop that Miz ate, like, that hurt. That turned his chest purple. And I think Miz probably had a cut or something, because I, I could have sworn that, that he that his chest, like, literally, like, the double chops literally broke the skin of Miz. Um, his, his, Miz's chest is probably so sore. Being chopped. It's probably that tender and right. Woo! That was the end of that. And Miz also got a pretty good sized gash on his elbow. I don't know what from though. But I'm like, Miz Miz doesn't bleed that often. So when the Miz the Miz has blood on him, you know he's going. Indeed. From there, Morrison has a jawbreaker as a little will come back. Um the Miz, of course. He, Morrison distracts the referee. Drew staggers into the Miz. The Miz gives him a cheap shot. Again, very classic heel stuff, which is good. And the Miz and, Miz and Morrison double team into the post and then into the barricades. That was good to see. Uh, Morrison, he does this twisted splash thing. More, John Morrison needs to become Johnny Mundo in the WWE. He has to stop being the classic WWE wrestler and goes more towards the Lucha Underground style as Johnny Mundo. As John Morrison, yeah, he's really good. He can do it. It just seems like he's not allowed to do it. As Johnny Mundo, it was a really quickened pace. It felt exciting. It was good to see him do flippy stuff. He might be getting older and say, you know what? I, I want to save my knees for a little bit too. But still... John Morrison has to become Johnny Mundo eventually. Uh, he tried the, the Starship pain. That would have been awesome. But no, uh, Drew stopped that. He then launched. Uh, they both go to the top rope. Drew launched Morrison like halfway across the, across the ring. Drew <laughs> drags poor, poor Miz. And he tosses Miz from corner to corner. Drew's strength's amazing. Drew to Spine Buster. Meh. Good spine buster. No Arn Anderson level spine buster, but pretty good himself. Morrison hit the moonlight drive. That's so oh, that's so good to see. I think it's, it used to be called like Around the World or some Moonlight Drive. The only thing John Morrison was missing to do was a Spanish was a standing Spanish fly. Or even a top rope Spanish fly. That that would have been amazing. Um, eventually Drew eats a skull crushing finale because he was distracted. By Morrison on the outside. Miz snuck up behind him. Hit the skull crushing finale. He does kick out though. Um, Drew then. Throws Morrison over the top rope. Miz eats Claymore. Drew McIntyre wins. Cheeseburger match. Then he's just celebrating. He, Drew eats an arc out of nowhere. Because Randy Orton shows up, Alexa Bliss shows up, and then the Fiend's there. Fate to Black, end of show. Um, overall, it felt fast. They had a lot of wrestling segments, not a lot of talking segments. I'll tell you what, just because of the Firefly Funhouse, <laughs> that, that made me laugh so hard to hear the puppet curse. I don't know what it is, but puppets cursing just sounds 
money for some reason. Uh, uh, something's wrong, but that's just funny, though. Probably because it is wrong to have a puppet curse. But that's okay. This is a cheeseburger raw. And that was Monday Night Raw. Again, pretty... I, Firefly Funhouse is the best part of it. And the wrestling matches were meh to good. Always hard to tell. But yeah, um, so again, Tuesday, tomorrow, uh, see me again here. you live streaming. And um, to Isaiah Lewis, check out the...